It's been a while since we had a solo video on this channel, so I figured we'd have a little update, so to speak. Uh, here is the last uh, harvest of the batteries, which I uh, got and neglected quite a few months back. I think I got these... Uh, it's approaching almost half a year ago, and I just put them on a pallet, each side, under a tarp and they've been sitting there ever since just having some basic checkups on them to make sure they don't go bad but uh, winter's arrived here it's turning to be a negative degree celsius outside so I've had to take them inside because I don't want to freeze them to death they are Sun and Shine uh, A606 300 6 volt uh, 300 amp hour blocks uh, they were taken out of service on a, an island uh, I believe it was a link staging for telecom use. Uh, they were originally two 48 volt strings, and uh, one of the strings had suffered a single battery failure. Uh, so uh, they decided they were going to upgrade the system anyway due to recent power instabilities around here. So they decided to just to toss all of them away. Uh, these are from 2007, very late 2007. I believe they were put into service early 2008, which makes them. Uh, about seven years old in service, but uh, anyone familiar with Sun and Shine are going to know that their batteries are very, very, very highly rated, and uh, I believe these are rated for a 15-year life cycle. And I have been running ever so slowly some diagnostics on all of them, and uh, yeah, they've all come out at well over 300 amp hours at a 10 amp rate which is basically just excellent. If I were to increase the rate, they wouldn't perform quite as well, but I don't have an easy way of uh, running more than 10 amps through them. So th those are coming along nicely. Beyond that, though, I still have way, way, way too many of these yellow 170 amp hour guys. Most of these have actually been tested. A lot of them are in fair shape, some of them are a bit iffy. A couple of them have been just about 170 amps, but a couple of them have been uh, down in less than 100. So these are really in varying shape, and they're in varying age, and they've been in varying quality installation. So that's not really too surprising. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I've got to do some thinking about what to do with these because uh, I really have quite a few more of them than I actually need because here's the rest of them. I think I have a, something like 36 in total, and this is my current solar system. And we've got the Morningstar TS MPPT60 controller sitting here on an electrical box, and we've just got some heavy duty control stuff, brackets, and so forth in here. That big breaker there is the main battery breaker. Then we've got two sub breakers which allow me to divide the batteries uh, up into two strings and disconnect uh, three strings at a time or three uh, parallel series at a time all the batteries uh, they come in through these cables here so they are they're not connected together directly in parallel but it's a 48 volt system uh, but they are connected in parallel only up there at the top of that breaker so these strings are fused between each other so if one battery goes bad uh, the breaker will just flip and take that string offline uh, instead of just causing a massive mayhem and fire and explosions and so forth. Although th these two guys are, uh, I believe, a 56 amp breakers, so they're a bit oversized. I've got a heap of uh, 6 amp breakers, which I've consider, considered putting in, but uh, that's a project for the future. And that breaker over to the far left is just the photovoltaic photo a solar cell and break which just uh, goes on out to my 500 watt solar panels in the yard and I've also got uh, a little wireless box sitting here which uh, allows me to monitor the Morningstar controller just over wireless LAN it's uh, using WDS to connect to my main LAN and I've just got an Ethernet cord going straight into the controller which works very well, except for when this box decides to act up. Now, these batteries, actually, I have not tested the capacity of these since I put them in service prior to getting my battery tester uh, finished. So, I've still got to do that. I 
put some notes on in preparation, but I never got around to actually testing these. Uh, they, they seem to be in decent order, they are very well balanced. I just measured through them earlier today, and the voltage is basically 12.6 across all of them. Now that it's uh, winter and almost pitch black outside, I'm not getting any usable power out of these whatsoever. I'm, my solar panels are just working hard to even keep them charged. But uh, sadly though, as you can see here, these batteries have been damaged from the uh, charge for battery back. Okay, goodbye. Right, so a lot of his batteries have been damaged by the previous owner, a telecom company, from over-talking these terminals, because they're delivered without these uh, metal brackets actually installed, and uh, they, they are leaching slightly around the edges between the actual terminal in there and the plastic surrounding it, so even though I've cleaned all of these up prior to installing them, a lot of them are just starting to leak again. And I think one down here is even leaking so much as to cause a small puddle of electrolytes down there. Which isn't good in any way. But for, for the price I paid for these batteries, I can't complain. This is... Uh, Otherwise, the system of 20 batteries in total. I think I shot about a million hours of footage building this thing up, but I never got around to editing it, editing it because it just turned out crap. So, here you go. On average, these batteries should be the ones which I'm best shape of the newest of a bunch. I think they were, or most of them were installed in 2009, with a few 2008s as well. The batteries themselves being manufactured in 2008 and 9, uh, 2007 and 8. But again, I haven't properly tested them. In part due to the state of this room, actually. Uh, this is just. Uh, uh, this isn't a real room, even. It's not a part of a house. It's uh, the front part, which is basically just uh, a staircase. And the, the real house begin begins along this line there. So there's no heating in here, and it's got some fairly severe water leaks, hence uh, the plastic pallety things on the floor. And this is where the old Fiskars uh, UPS uh, slash inverter resides. It's not normally powered on this time of the year, since again I don't have any usable power whatsoever, but I can turn it on in case of a power loss or something up the line, which is very common around autumn time in this area, so I've got uh, 500 VAs or, well, an overload capability of, what, 800 watts sitting here if necessary. And even though I don't get much replenishable energy, I've got <laughs> a pretty long backup time for the fridge and stuff, if so needed. And that'll probably round most of it up. Just a little update on battery and solar stuff for those of you out of there who like to see it. I probably need to get back into doing more of this stuff in the near future. I've got to go through all of these. These are definitely first on the agenda, but sadly I don't think I'm going to be keeping all these because uh, I prefer the format of these uh, yellow batteries and I know that they are more easy to get your hands on and I think they're definitely more easy to manage than the giant uh, squarish format of the sun and shines even though the sun and shines are going to be of superior quality the sun and shines are also going to be easier to sell off to anyone since uh, I think lots of golf carts and stuff use similar size batteries uh, it is a shame though, I love me some sunshines. And just as a quick fo footnote, here's my battery testing jig. I made a couple of videos on the internals of this thing some time back, but it's basically been in use since and I haven't you know, bothered making any more about it. So this is a four channel, uh, basically one to, I think it's designed up to, to 15 volts, one to 15 volts. Uh, a uh, four channel uh, current sink, it uh, will draw a constant current out of whatever's connected to it and uh, 
it's got a, a charger terminal as well and an internal relay on every board so this thing will uh, empty a battery and once it's done it will connect a charger in this case the power cube there and charge it back up and provide you with a rather detailed log of the process this is the UI which is just a very basic uh, .NET application written by a friend of mine, the designer of the entire thing, where you can get some live data out of it right now. The battery I've tested at 6.07 volts and it's been drawn out of 72.8 amp hours. When it's done, it's going to give me a very nice discharge curve of a battery down there, and it also allows me to export all the battery data to a CSV which I can then process in Excel or whatever I so desire which is what I've done with uh, basically all the batteries here are all the files I've got so it has some data on the yellow ones we've got uh, 160, 150 amp hours, 110, 90, that's one, 72, 90, 80, so yeah, the yellow ones I've just denoted them by the serial number, by the way. They are, are, are in really varying shape, sadly. Although I think for once in the current solar system are going to be better than most of these. So, yeah. Not all bits. I'll probably make more videos on that thing in the future, because it's a pretty big project. It took a long time to complete, and still not entirely done, but it's reached that stage of stagnation where it's good enough to kind of be used for a productive purpose so no one will ever be bothered to do anything about it ever again. Cheerio.